Welcome back everybody, MinMax RPG here, and I am super excited to bring you this video. This is actually a build I started developing in the first cycle, but it started to fall a little bit flat as you scaled to higher corruptions. However, with the addition of the World Splitter in the second cycle, this build has a whole new potential, and a lot more fun. We're going to cover the build completely unapologetic to the rock music. Enjoy. For the general gameplay, we'll look something like this. Use Void Cleave to travel, and then slam down with a Race and Strike. Use Void Cleave to travel, slam down with a Race and Strike pick up any of the loot that you would like. Very simple, very fast, and very effective. The basics of the build revolve around a one-two punch, a Void Cleave and a Racing Strike. Void Cleave is actually gonna be a traversal skill. We're gonna transform this and allow us to kill enemies and at least proc things along the way, just making our clear speed a lot faster. Also can get Obliterator. This is gonna allow our next Racing Strike to be a critical strike. Keep in mind, the Racing Strike does not need to be your next ability. So you can Void Cleave multiple times, use healing hands, whatever it may be. You could even use other buffs if you like to. As long as you use a racing strike after hitting an enemy with void cleave, it will be a critical strike. Racing strike is gonna be the big pow. This is what we're looking to kill the majority of enemies with, but void cleave is not a sleeper. In fact, it does about 85 to 90% of the damage that a racing strike does. This may change as you continue to scale, but in the beginning or early stages, it's gonna do a large portion of damage as well. So you have two very hard hitting abilities. Obliterator is gonna increase the melee damage that you do. We're gonna get some additional critical strike chance. This is important for our echoes because our echoes do not automatically crit after we use Void Cleave, so just keep that in mind. We're gonna make sure that we're getting Void Essence. This is gonna play a crucial part in the build that we'll discuss later in the video. Adding critical strike multiplier because we're critting 100% of the time. And we're gonna increase the mana cost. This is because World Splitter is actually gonna synergize with a higher mana cost attack, giving us more damage, additional cooldown recovery, and increased damage against enemies that have already been hit. Top of this, we're gonna get additional damage. The kill threshold here is irrelevant because we actually get that from our passive trees of Void Knight. And finally, we're gonna take time loot. This is gonna give us additional echoes whenever we use the ability. You can put a third point in this if you have enough skill points. And you can even place a point in Shattered Continuity if you just wanna spam a racing strike. You can even put one point here and then one point in Shattered Continuity. It's pretty flexible. I do wanna mention that I have tested and gone through in this portion of the tree going up to final hour. This is gonna give your bleed chance to be converted into time rot and then give you additional melee damage against those enemies. You may think this has some synergy with World Splitter and you'd be correct because it has a chance to bleed on melee hit. However, I found this less effective than the setup that I'm showing you in this video. That doesn't mean that it can't be used if you'd like to. I'm just telling you from my experience, it wasn't as effective. Now we'll be using a number of buffs as well in this build and we'll talk about those in a minute. But one thing to keep in mind is you're gonna be picking up Sigils of Hope just from killing the enemies when you find higher health enemies, you can use your Anomaly. As you see here, we're getting the Ambush. Anomaly is gonna give you a large damage buff and you can see that the abilities start to hit for significantly more damage. So there's also something that you can certainly use on bosses. But in general, everything's gonna go down pretty quickly, at least until you start scaling corruption higher. Can you use this build prior to obtaining the World Splitter? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I'll leave different timestamps throughout the video that you can jump to if you wanna reference certain leveling points. The Sentinel tree itself will be unchanged throughout the leveling process, regardless of where you are. Eight points into Fearless, this will give you additional vitality and some increased health regen, which is actually really strong in the early leveling process. Five points into Armor Clad, this is gonna reduce the damage you take from nearby enemies by a massive 10%, very strong talent. Five points into Valiant Charge, you can get increased cooldown recovery for movement skills, which is gonna include Void Cleave, and you can get some additional health. Two points into Juggernaut will increase your resistances and give you a little bit of strength add some damage output and also some survivability through armor. You'll need to place 15 points in the Paladin tree when possible, and I'll tell you when I recommend that in just a sec. Put five points in Defiance to increase your elemental resistance, 10 points into Valor to increase your health and your healing effectiveness, which actually synergizes with healing hands. And overall, these 15 points are gonna give you access to healing hands and sigils of hope, two buffs that we'll use within this build. Within the Void Knight tree, I would recommend jumping to the Paladin tree as soon as you unlock Anomaly. So unlock Anomaly, place that on your specialization bar, and then jump into Paladin to unlock the other two buffs that you use. This is because the three buffs actually synergize with each other, and those three buffs are gonna be Sigils of Hope, Healing Hands, and Anomaly. Within Healing Hands, you actually get increased effect by having increased healing effectiveness. So we've talked about it a few times, so you get some additional benefit from that. And on top of that, the combined levels of specialized buff skills, the three that we're talking about here, gain additional damage to the skill as well. Healing Hands will be converted to a melee skill that is actually gonna proc every time we use an attack and hit one enemy. So every time we're hitting something, not only are we getting leech from our passive tree, but this specialization skill is adding on top of that as well. And we're even gonna get some healing over time, which just adds to the sustain of the character. 
And since it costs zero mana by taking this route within the skill tree, there's no reason not to have it. Scissors of Hope will add increased damage to our character. This will proc automatically whenever we kill an enemy at a 6% chance. Over the course of an echo, this will add up. On bosses, you may have a chance to spawn some of these from enemies if they have adds, otherwise you'll need to cast this at times when it's opportunistic. It'll be converted to void and you get some additional sigils. If you have some extra skill points from items, then you can actually go through and get additional sigils as well. So overall, the skill is just gonna be a buff that increases our damage and then increases healing hands as well. The main component of Anomaly that we're looking for here is actually to have this effect here. The time bubble is gonna shred void resistance and we have no other source of this within the build. So this is really important when we're attacking bosses. On top of that, we get some increased attack speed cooldown recovery, and other various effects that help the character's output. The Void Knight tree is very straightforward, and I'll leave a leveling path for this within the description of the video. That way you can check this out and go point for point if you'd like to. I also want to mention that the remaining points we have will be going into Future Mind to finish out the build, and then you have a few flexible points. I would recommend putting them into Increase Echo Chance. For the progression, you'll place six points into Temporal Corruption. This is going to increase your Void Damage. Three points into Abyssal Endurance. going to increase your Health, as well as a couple more Resistances. One point into World Eater. This should be enough Leech for you throughout the build in order to keep your character alive after you've attacked something. From there, you can place eight points into Void Blade. Increase your melee damage with both of your two hard-hitting abilities. Two points into Doom Knight, which is going to be necessary in order to unlock Remainder of the Tree. 5 points into Finality, this is going to increase melee void damage and also give you a 10% kill threshold, really nice as the boss's hit points continue to scale. 4 points into Woe, increasing your melee damage but more importantly unlocking Singular Purpose when you get there. And the 5th point that you need in order to progress the tree can be picked up by Void Corruption. I would choose this node later because it scales with the number of points you have within the tree. So by taking it later on you get a little bit more value once you pick it up. Prior to that you're getting kind of minimal value. Four points into Singular Purpose. This is gonna give you a large void damage increase. Five points into Eternal Form is gonna to add to your tankiness. You're gonna get Vitality, increased health, and then additional health per Vitality. Then you place a point in Essence at the end. This talent is not so great on its own. However, it gives you access to Void Well. When you have three or more Void Essences and you drop below zero mana, you consume one Void Essence to set your mana to 30% of your maximum pool. This is how we sustain our infinite mana loop with this build. And that's because we have a 100% chance to gain Void Essence on crit, and we always crit with a Racing Strike if we use it after Void Cleave hits an enemy. So hit an enemy with Void Cleave, crit with your Racing Strike, generate these Void Essences, and keep your mana pool full. Not necessarily full, but it keeps you at 30%, and the higher you scale this mana pool, the more damage you do through the World Splitter, and the more sustain that you have. Once you get about 350 mana or so, you should not be going oom. If you are, you can always adjust the number of points you have in time loop, but since this won't cast if you have negative mana, it really shouldn't be an issue. In general, the sustain of this build is very high. 15 points into Dread, increased movement speed, increased void damage, both very strong. Then you start going into Echoing Strikes. This can give you increased echo chance. Here you get some additional melee attack speed, additional time rot, which is pretty negligible for the build, but again, echo chance. Even more Echo Chance, increased mana cost, which adds to the damage output of the build. We actually want our skills to cost more mana. Then we'll jump into Future Mind to start increasing that mana pool as mentioned, and then you can take the remaining points, pump them into Echo Chance, or even increase melee attack speed and Echo Chance if you prefer. Some general gameplay tips for this build include using Void Cleave strategically. You can use Void Cleave to travel a large distance, or you can use it to move a short distance and avoid enemy attacks. Carefully repositioning your character is vital for the success of this build. Using abilities like Sigils of Hope or your other buffs have a cast time, meaning that your character will actually be stationary, so make sure that you're using these at appropriate times so that your character doesn't get hit by incoming damage while trying to buff. Healing Hands does not cost any mana, and it can be used even without an enemy there, and this will still heal your character. Provided you're sustaining your mana, every cast of a Racing Strike will do three or four casts of the ability. That's because you'll generate two Echoes automatically and potentially generate another Echo through your passives. This makes Helmets with the implicit property of increased Echo damage when a skill is Echoed very strong for this build, so be on the lookout for items like that. There are also some idols that'll increase your damage after a skill Echoes. However, I've actually found the idols that just increase your melee void damage to be more beneficial for the character, because you're always gaining benefit of this. Increased melee attack speed does benefit this build, because it allows your attacks to get off quicker, and then reposition your character to get to a safer location. Increased cooldown recovery speed is also good for this build, just like it was in the first cycle. This is just going to allow you to not have to necessarily take certain talents within a racing strike, but it also allows your Void Cleave to recover quickly. Dark Stride will also give you an additional charge for Void Cleave. It's not mandatory for this build, but it makes the gameplay a lot smoother. 
the world splitter which has been shown in several screenshots but i do want to talk about this item as well you can get increased melee void damage which is beneficial for the two abilities you use to kill enemies increased area for melee skills per one mana cost this is the reason why we're increasing the mana cost of a racing strike to make sure that it hits the whole screen increased critical strike chance for melee attacks per mana cost now, although this effect is actually negligible for Racing Strike, there are occasions where we use a Racing Strike without casting Void Cleave first, or perhaps Void Cleave just misses an enemy. And again, Void Cleave does some really good damage itself, so getting a higher increased Critical Strike chance is good for that skill. 1% melee critical strike multiplier per 10 max mana. Not only does the maximum mana of our character scale with the ability to increase our mana sustain, it's now increasing our damage as well, which is really good for the build. Essentially, once we get everything covered, like maximizing our resist, increasing our armor to an acceptable level, getting enough movement speed, and enough health to survive, we're just pushing mana to the extreme. In fact, I think it's capable to reach about a thousand mana with this build, which will greatly increase the damage output. Feel free to leave any comments. If you have questions about any of the other items, I'll scroll over those as well, just so you can see what I'm using. This will also be available in the link in the video description. But in general, at this point in the game, I'm still working on things like lessons, the character sheet will be updated, and I'll have an updated video as well as this build pushes higher corruption. At this point, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch the video, and I'll leave some screenshots as well as some more video information about the leveling process for anybody interested in getting to the point of where this video begins. Prior to unlocking the Void Knight Mastery, we need to get to that point, so we're going to primarily rely on two skills. I would recommend using Rive and Lunge. Rive will essentially be the main damage dealing attack that you have, and I would use this as your first specialization. It's okay to not specialize in ability until this is unlocked. Your character will be just fine in the early levels. It's allow you to get more value out of the specialization points once it does become unlocked. And Rive is going to stay with us on the specialization bar for quite some time. As for the skill tree, I would recommend focusing on increasing the attack speed of the first and second attack. Further down in the tree, we'll actually eliminate the third attack altogether. This is going to be beneficial. This will allow us to apply armor shred, fairly quickly to enemies and then follow up with one of our hard hitting abilities, a racing strike and even void cleave once we have it. As for lunge, this is gonna be a movement or traversal skill. Essentially, we're just using this for mobility. An added benefit of this is we can just dump points immediately into regaining health whenever we use it. And this is really nice to top the character off. But what you'll do is take lunge and you'll actually de-specialize that skill. Then you can place a racing strike on and start to buff this skill. This is gonna give you a little bit quicker clear time. The first node you'll want to go into here is going to be obliteration and you can just put all five points or the first five points that you get into this it's going to increase the melee void damage and spell void damage that you deal as well after just a few more levels you'll unlock void cleave and a third specialization slot at this point you'll place void cleave in there and again we just want to buff the damage that this skill is doing now we can buff the damage of the skill in a couple of different ways early on within the skill tree you can either go for reduced cooldown and that'll just allow you to spam this more frequently, or you can go for larger hits with a larger area. Personally, I prefer to go for the extra damage at this point. As your character gets into the 30s, your specializations should look something like this. We'll still be using Rive, Racing Strike, and Void Cleave. And I'll pause on each one of these just so you can take a look for a minute. Keep in mind with the Racing Strike tree, you'll have three points into Profit's Onslaught at this point. However, as you venture further into the Void Cleave tree, at least for the leveling process, you'll eventually unlock Obliterator. For the fourth specialization that you've now unlocked, you can use Lunge. However, I would recommend despecializing that skill when you unlock Anomaly and swapping that in. So choice is up to you if you want to spend the time specializing Lunge and then just removing it in a little bit. The passive trees will not respec anything at this point. It'll still be using all of the original points that we allocated and then some. As we go further into the Void Knight tree, you'll unlock some useful nodes. And one thing I want to point out is you may be tempted to take Doom Knight because that's going to increase your strength and your health. However, I find that Abyssal Endurance is actually a much stronger talent for leveling because you're likely going to need the resistances, and both Void and Physical Resist are really good for leveling. At this point, in terms of gameplay, you should basically be one-shotting anything with either your Racing Strike or the Void Cleave, so keep that in mind. You will be using Rive from time to time, but ideally, it's just something that you use when nothing else is available, so you're not really looking to stand there and Rive an enemy as you're seeing me do right here. What you're really looking to do is Racing Strike, Void Cleave, and just continue moving, using Lunge for Mobility and just to increase your clear speed. Just to further that point, I actually find it better to kite around and group enemies up. That way when you use your stronger hitting abilities, they'll go down a lot faster. Here's an example of a higher health mob, and you'll see here that I am going to make use of Rive. I'm going to make sure that I'm positioned safely, and then you can begin using the Rive, waiting for your cooldowns to come up, because there's really not anything to kite, especially if the enemy is ranged. 